Hi, this is JP Argenziano from Naples, Italy, and today I would like to speak with you about melanoma in congenital nevi. I like congenital nevi because uh, we always uh, speak about uh, this plastic nevi, acquired nevi, but in my view, uh, congenital nevi today are much more interesting than uh, acquired nevi. We know many more things than in the past about this issue. Uh, from a meta-analysis of uh, nevus-associated melanoma, uh, we we know uh, that definitely this is a proven fact 70% of melanomas we see in our practice are developing de novo on normal skin uh, from the normal melanocytes but it means that 30% of cases of melanoma we see in our practice are developing on a pre-existing nevus. Uh, uh, a common uh, common sense uh, is uh, uh, is uh, telling us that most uh, melanomas should arise uh, from this plastic nevi. So when there is a nevus uh, pre-existing and the melanoma is developing, then this nevus should be this plastic. But it's not true. From the meta-analysis we demonstrated that uh, the great majority of the uh, nevus associated melanomas are arising from non dysplastic nevi, more than 50%, and the great majority of uh, nevus associated melanomas are developing on a pre existing dermal melanocytic nevus, 54% of cases. Eh? And this is the, the prototype of the uh, nevus associated melanoma arising on a pre-existing dermal nevus. You see uh, the melanoma uh, which is black, which is irregular, which is showing streaks at the periphery and on top we have a, a small dermal nevus which was pre-existing. Uh, and you know the point is, the point is that dermal nevi are indeed congenital nevi. Uh, uh, of course, it's, uh, this is not a common knowledge, but if we think uh, 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 reasonably about this point, uh, we have to conclude that since most of acquired nevi, uh, they don't follow the usual stepwise uh, progression from junctional to compound into dermal. Most of acquired nevi are going to disappear. They start junctional and they are going to uh, go through spontaneous involution over time. Uh, the true nevi that are following the stepwise progression are congenital. So most of dermal nevi are indeed congenital nevi. Eh? And therefore, therefore, most of uh, melanomas uh, developing on a pre-existing nevus are developing on a pre-existing congenital melanocytic nevus. Now, concerning the risk of transformation, we know very well that there is a uh, a, 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 different, a difference in terms of risk. So the more the nevus uh, is large, the more there's the risk of developing melanoma. So more or less the risk is the following. One out of 10 large congenital melanocytic nevi can develop melanoma. One out of 200 intermediate sized congenital melanocytic nevi can develop melanoma. And let's say one out of 200,000 uh, small congenital melanocytic nevi can develop melanoma. This is of, obviously not known, but I'm uh, moving this number from what we know from acquired nevi. So we know that in general, generally speaking, uh, 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 common nevi have the risk, have a risk of melanoma of one uh, of two, um, on, uh, uh, one to two hundred uh, uh, nevi. Okay, so. Uh, since we know that um, the risk is in proportion, in direct proportion to uh, the size of the nevus, we expect to find what in our practice? That we see more uh, large congenital nevi uh, developing melanoma than small congenital nevi developing melanoma. But in our experience, it's true the opposite. So it is true that the, the, the risk of, in, uh, in, of, of melanoma increases by the increasing size of the congenital nevus, but the majority of melanomas arise in small congenital nevi because they are much more frequent. 
Huh? This is the paper where we uh, were analyzing this, uh, uh, this uh, scenario. Uh, this was a retrospective observational study in which we collected all the melanomas in our database which were uh, arising in uh, conjunction with uh, congenital nevus, 27 cases. And uh, the greatest majority of the melanomas in our, in our series were arising from small congenital melanocytic nevi, 21 out of 27, only five on medium size and only one on large, uh, on large congenital melanocytic nevi. Why so? And it's simple, it's simple. If you think about it, how many congenital melanocytic nevi of large size are out there? Huh? How many uh, large congenital nevi you see in our in your practice? Maybe one uh, uh, in two years. Okay, so the 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 probability to see a large congenital nevi developing a melanoma is very low. How many medium-sized congenital nevi we see in our practice? Certainly more than large congenital nevi, but certainly not more than uh, one in a month. Okay, therefore the greatest majority eh, of, uh, of, of congenital nevi we see in our practice are the small type, okay? And therefore, the relative proportion, the relative probability to see a melanoma arising in a small congenital nevi is much higher than compared to intermediate size congenital and large size congenital nevi. Okay, in uh, in our paper also we also analyzed uh, uh, the age in which the risk is uh, higher um, uh, uh, concerning the development of melanoma, and we saw that there is no um, uh, there is no difference. So in each age can uh, can be at risk. So there is not uh, too much um, uh, a difference in terms of uh, of age. And now, finally, what, based on what we said, what should be our management, the management of congenital nevi? Uh, well, it's, in my view, quite, uh, quite simple. What about large congenital nevi? Definitely, this is not uh, a nevus which is easy to be excised. So what we have to do is regular follow-up of these uh, uh, very rare cases of large congenital nevi. What about small congenital nevi? Could we, based on what we said, could we uh, excise all of them? Come on, no way, because anyhow, anyhow the risk is very low, it's one out of 200,000, so it's impossible to think to excise 200,000 nevi to prevent one transformation, you know? So what we have to do? Nothing, uh, nothing different than one, what we did until now. We just have to follow our patients, and when the patient has many, many nevi, we see them regularly. When they have very few nevi, we see them once every two or three years. And what about medium-sized congenital nevi? Well, this is where um, there is no uh, agreement in the literature. Someone is saying it's better to excise. Someone is saying it's better to follow. In my view, why not? Why not to excise uh, an intermediate-sized congenital nevi? The risk is one out of 200. So we have to excise 200 nevi to prevent the melanoma, which is not a, a, a dramatic scenario. And also, the patients will be usually happy to remove uh, a cosmetically disturbant nevus. Therefore, our attitude is to suggest excision of medium-sized congenital nevus. And with this, I thank you for your attention.